So here, here's where you talk about each one of these issues and, and why it's uh, impactful. Would you just summarize for us? Mm -hmm. So now this, tell us a little bit about this chart. Yeah, now this one is really amazing and much too much detail here to go into. You can see the metallothion in most of the way down. I mentioned, we mentioned that not only is that uh, uh, protein hogging zinc, it also has a lot of glycines in it. You look at this, MS, if you can read that, MSCCGG and CGCS motif is a particular sequence of amino acids in that protein and those G's in there are glycines. And what we have discovered is that if we assume that glyphosate is substituting for glycine by a mistake during protein synthesis, it can explain a lot of the correlations that we're seeing. We're seeing all these correlations with all these diseases and you say, how can one molecule have caused so many diseases? It doesn't make sense. If you assume it's doing this, it's getting into those proteins by mistake, you can explain all of those diseases. That's what's really, truly remarkable. And in the case of, um, of anencephaly, there's a huge list here of crucial proteins that have essential glycine. So you see here this conserved G category, protein on the left here, all these different proteins, insulin receptor, all these receptors, insulin receptor, folate receptor, LDL receptor, all three. Um, are disrupted, they have essential glycines in them. If those glycines are replaced by anything else, really, or you know, lots of other amino acids could go in instead of glycine, and if you do that, they won't work. The protein gets busted. That has to be glycine. This is what's so interesting is that these proteins have, certain proteins have certain glycines that are absolutely essential for their function. And that's where you can find all these papers that talk about these things. They never mention glyphosate because they're not thinking in terms of glyphosate substituting. But if you do think in terms of that, you can explain why all these proteins are impaired. And then you can explain why glyphosate would cause this disease. And that's what we've done here. All these different proteins um, <clears throat> that play a crucial role in development have, have essential glycines. And that would be um, catastrophic if those glycines got replaced by glyphosate. Yeah, so I, I want to address that there are scientists that say that glyphosate cannot substitute for glycine, glycine and go into the cells. That's what you're talking about, right? Yes, yes. I'm and, getting a huge amount of pushback, actually. Most yeah, scientists are so saying what, that. What do you have to say to them about that? I, I think that they're wrong, and I think that this, the studies have not been done. No one has proven that it's not happening. Right. And so they're equally, um, you know, weak as I am. Both sides are weak because neither side has proven that the other side is wrong. I have a tremendous amount of evidence, including the shikimate pathway, which is quite remarkable. The enzyme that it disrupts in the shikimate pathway it is called EPSP synthase. <clears throat> that enzyme has an essential glycine at the site where PEP, phosphoenopyruvate, fits into a pocket. And they've studied the enzyme to try to figure out how does glyphosate disrupt it. And they've determined that glyphosate gets in the way of PEP in that pocket. But they haven't yet, they're puzzled over exactly how it does that. Well, one way it can do it is by replacing the glycine. And the glycine is absolutely conserved. Typically, it's, it's highly conserved um, amino acid at that spot and crucial for things, for the PEP to be able to fit. So multiple species of animals, uh, of, of microbes, multiple species of microbes and multiple species of plants have independently discovered that if they replace that glycine in that protein with alanine, they, they, they take a hit. The protein doesn't work as well. You know, it reduces its enzymatic activity, but they become completely immune to glyphosate. Getting rid of that glycine is what the protein needs to do to protect itself from glyphosate. That is almost the strongest evidence you can think of to say the most logical explanation for how glyphosate is affecting this protein is by displacing that glycine. It would totally explain what it's doing, what they're observing that it's doing. So I think that's the most compelling evidence. Yeah, that, that sounds very compelling to me. And as, as a mother who wants to protect her children, <clears throat> I feel like even if it's not proven with 2,000 rats, you know, taking five years to do this, I, I believe I have the right to this information. 
you yes, know, I mean, this is how it could be harming, especially if I'm going to be getting pregnant or if I have, you know, friends that want to get pregnant, they should know yeah. the information before they try to get pregnant. And anybody who poo poos it and says, no, this is not true and you should not be sharing it could actually be contributing yes. to birth defects happening. And that is very dangerous to just say this can't be happening. That's like when I, when I, when, when my son had an allergy and he said, I want all my allergies to go away. And in my head, I said, that's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, saying it's never going to happen doesn't help him. No, I I, know. And then I, I, you know, when I asked myself, maybe it could, maybe I could have his allergies go, what, what's possible? What could be happening? If, his, if we could make his allergies go away, what could we do about it? And that's when we had a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. And that's when we helped to heal him. But if you don't look at what's possible, and if this... Exactly. Well, right? people say you can't reverse autism, and that is not true. I know people who have reversed hundreds of cases of autism. Yeah. It's really remarkable. <laughs> You know, and a lot of it is just to go organic, get some probiotics, go organic, get out in the sun. I mean, it's easy, easy stuff. Yeah. And, um, and the thing is that it, it, I don't see any reason why one should not be allowed to do what I'm doing, which is to say, here are all these proteins, here are all these glycines, here is what would happen if, here's this evidence in, in the correlations, you know, perfect correlation between glyphosate and this disease. This is how this could explain this disease on the basis of glyphosate substituting for glycine. They say it works here, it works there, it works everywhere. You, there's no reason why you can't say that hypothetically this is what would happen if glyphosate did this, even though it hasn't been proven. It has not been proven that it doesn't do it either. Well, so there's no reason why you should this. be. It's part of the scientific <clears throat> process to first come up with a exactly. hypothesis and, and put these things together and say, wait a second, this could be happening. Right. I mean, you say if it does happen, it explains everything. You know, that doesn't make you say it can't happen, therefore forget it. You know, that should say, hey, maybe it is happening. Let's take a look, right? Yeah. You know? So we're taking a look. What else do you want to, is there anything else you want to explain about this chart? I mean, there's so much here. It's hard, kind of hard to go into the details. You can sort of just see that uh, the important thing really is just that this is available. And if you really wanted to learn, you could go and read these things, all these different disruptions that occur, cell cycle delay, um, uh, fetal DHA sulfate uh, deficiency is very interesting, actually. This one with the LDL receptor, very, very interesting, because that also connects to uh, high serum LDL. The LDL receptor has a, a glycine, a central glycine residue. And if that's messed up, it won't go to the membrane, it won't take up the LDL. This means you'll have high serum LDL, you'll be put on a statin drug. So this is what I think is a, a Explain major. Explain LDL again, that's related to cholesterol, isn't it? Yeah, that's your bad, that's a so-called bad cholesterol. And there, so many people are getting tested and they're like, oh my God, I have high, high LDL, I have to take a statin drug. Um, that's because um, the LDL is, LDL is a particle that carries cholesterol and also carries fats and it delivers them to the cells through this receptor. But if the receptor is broken, then the LDL sticks around in the blood and gets high, gets elevated. And then you're put on a statin drug to knock out the liver so that it can't produce it, which is the wrong solution. What you should do is get rid of the glyphosate so that the receptor can work again. You know, but this so, L- receptor is also very important in development. So glyphosate can disrupt the, the, the receptor that, that makes the LDL? That takes it up into the cell. Takes it up oh. into the cell from the particle that's out in the blood. So when it can't take it up, then it just sticks around in the blood and builds up and gets high. You get elevated LDL. And the LDL receptor is very important during fetal development. And this is even not just anencephaly. This is going to be microcephaly as well, because even though the neural tube closed correctly, it's very, very interesting that the, um, the way the hormones work in the, in the last trimester of pregnancy, this is so fascinating. We learned this from, the, from working on this paper. The, uh, the fetal um, adrenal glands have, have this area called the fetal zone. And the fetal zone takes up uh, cholesterol through the LDL receptor and converts it into this protein, this uh, sterol, steroid called DHEA. And it puts sulfate attached to it as well. It makes DHEA sulfate and releases that into the serum. And then the um, placenta takes up the DHEA sulfate and converts it into estrone sulfate, which then goes back to the baby's brain and helps it to develop. So 
there's a, it's a coordination between the placenta and the baby. As the baby has develops its fetal zone, then that's used to make this DHEA sulfate, which is then converted into estrone sulfate and goes and helps to build the baby's brain. If that process is broken down, then you're going to get microcephaly, even this, if you've had proper closure. I have to say, this is fascinating. This is, you are a computer looking at life, at biology. <laughs> that's true. How it all goes, it, it all syncs together. You're figuring out how life works. How, it's very nerdy. It's very yeah, nerdy, how, but it's so fun. <laughs> this is fascinating. I could I could listen to this for hours. I, I love to figure out how things happen. Like, why mm. is this happening to my child, right? Why, what happened here? What happened there? And so the light bulb goes off when you said things like, you know, when you, you, when you and uh, Samsel revealed the, the whole thing about shikimate pathway, how you know, glyphosate destroys the, the shikimate pathway in the bacteria in the gut. Yes. And we're like, wait a second, you know, the gut is where 70% of the immune system lies. The gut Absolutely. is where the hormones are stored and made. And, you know, like serotonin regulates, Absolutely. regulates diabetes. And all of a sudden now you're destroying the gut bacteria. You can't regulate, I mean, not diabetes, it regulates insulin, yes. right? So, you know, all of these connections start to come together and it's like, oh, this is what's happening. Yes, and it's great that today there's so much interest in the gut microbiome. And they, it took them a long time to realize how important it is. And one of the reasons why they're noticing it now is because it's being ruined by glyphosate. The gut microbiome is really hurting as a consequence of glyphosate. And that is causing a huge, huge number of diseases that we're seeing in our population today. And I think it's just a, a big crisis that we're facing right now. I, I find more and more people are coming up with more and more strange diseases that they don't understand, the doctor can't treat. They're all being poisoned by glyphosate. Here's diabetes, yeah. So, so what you're saying here is it's not just impacting the gut though, it's impacting the development of fetuses. Yes. It's causing these cuts that interrupt the development of yes. the fetus in many different ways. That's why you said a thousand different cuts. That's right. You can see all these different topics here. And each one of these is going into the uh, different proteins that can be disrupted if uh, glyphosate is substituting for glycine. It's really quite amazing and so fascinating. The science is really wonderful. I think if someone is willing to take the time to really get into it, um, you can have a lot of fun. If you, if you just have the kind of brain that likes to understand all of this and just get into the puzzle aspect of it. It's just uh, really fascinating and extremely scary because the glyphosate is going to really take us down. And I think it's terrifying the future that we face right now. It, it is terrifying. And I'm grateful for, to you and your, is it your partner, Gregory Nye? That works yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Please thank Gregory because this is absolutely, um, this is, I have to say that this is crucial to the future of mankind. I, I have to say human beings, right? Because I agree. I feel that way. I, I feel we're in a, we're in a threshold of, uh, uh, we're cross at a crossroads where if we don't go a different direction, we're not going to survive. I mean, when you look at the infertility itself, it can take, it can totally uh, cause us to become this extinct. Really, if we, if we can't reproduce, that's the end of the line for humans. And we're yeah. headed in that direction. And yeah, we are headed in that direction. And, and the sad thing is what will happen first is that the people who um, can't procreate, which will be a lot of people, I mean, in areas in China, it could be six years from now from the studies that they've already found testing 30. Yes, thousand. I know. I saw that. You, you, that was a wonderful um, analysis that you pointed out and, and um, yeah, brought six out into years the and For the rest of us, maybe about 20 years before, if we continue to be exposed to chemicals at the rate that we are at, it could be less than 20 years before we cannot produce naturally, which would mean only the elite will be able to produce. We'll find a way to reproduce, I think. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it won't be naturally. And so that would mean ten to $40,000 a pop to be able to reproduce a child. Mm -hmm. right to, to procreate and so that means only the elite will be able to procreate and that that creates a very scary world it I does think. it really does yes we can hope that those people who are listening and who uh, work towards uh, maintaining an organic diet 
um, will be the ones who can reproduce naturally. And therefore, yes. we will naturally grow the population of those people who are being sensible about not exposing themselves to the chemicals. So that's sort of an interesting twist also to hope that those people who are paying attention and doing something about it are the ones who are going to be able to reproduce. Yes. Yeah, which so, is kind of so a nice thought. Listen to Dr. Stephanie Seneff and Gregory and I and be aware that if you know anyone who is wanting to reproduce, to please, you know, to procreate children, please have them go all organic, detox their body, um, you know, exercise, sweat, sweat gets the de de detoxes, um, a lot of the toxins very quickly, eat all organic, get out in the sun, as Dr. Stephanie Seneff said, so to get the vitamin D. And, um, and to really just take care of yourselves, Eat, drink filtered water that um, has good minerals in it, have trace minerals. You know, you, all those minerals that you just mentioned, I don't think enough people know that they need to take trace mineral supplements now. Would you uh, agree about that? I, yeah, I mean, it's just sad. You shouldn't have to, but actually you can get in trouble because you can get simultaneous toxicity and, def and deficiency at the same time with glyphosate because it really messes up mineral transport and, and um, everything about the minerals gets messed up by glyphosate. It's very scary. Yeah. So we really have to pay attention to our health. And if you want to find out more, we have it posted on our website, momsacrossamerica.org under data. I believe it's at the top of the list now for, um, of, of the data page, glyphosate and anencephaly death by a thousand cuts. This is the reason probably why I started Moms Across America, because I wanted my children to be able to have children someday, to be able to experience the profound love that it is to have one's own child if they wish to. Um, you know, they may wish to adopt because they also know that there's a lot of children out there that need to be adopted. But if they wanted to have their own children, I, I would like them to be able to experience that. And if if this continues the way it's continuing now, it, that's not a, it's not a guarantee. You know, it, it could be um, really actually a miracle if they are able to reproduce considering the circumstances that we're in in this world. So thank you for paying attention. Is there anything else you want to say before we, we uh, stop the interview? Um, just that anybody who's listening, you know, please help to spread the word, uh, t tell your family, get them to eat organic. It's so important. Don't use Roundup in your yard, obviously, you know, and just uh, help to spread the word. That's so important. We need, to reach the, we need to reach the general population with this message. Yeah. So my, my request was everybody who uh, sees this video, please share this study with your OBGYN, right? There you go. Share it with your yes. pediatrician. Get this out there. If we have thousands of people sharing this study with their um, OBGYNs and their pediatricians, this could make a difference for, for millions of people. So please share, get the word out there. And uh, thank you, Dr. Stephanie Seneff, MIT, for, for being with us today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.